All right, every stream has places like this. Long, fairly straight banks, mud banks, clay banks. And you can make top edge sets um, at these locations just like you would at a bridge wall. Um, now mink sometimes, a lot of times will climb that high bank, but sometimes they're gonna be down in the water too and you can catch them. But you're really gonna catch muskrats, especially if you find a place like that, that's a little undercut. Um, they like to go under there for a little bit of cover. Muskrats love overhead cover. But I'm gonna show you something here that uh, I had an idea, I had a friend help me with, and it might help you set some top edge sets up in situations like this. Okay, like I just mentioned, uh, I came up with a idea on how to uh, make top edge sets at those vertical mud and clay banks uh, you find along most creeks. And I contacted a friend of mine, Gary, at the Hammer's Trapline Products, which if you watch my other videos, he uh, made dirt hole drivers for me. And he, he makes a bunch of grapples and drags and beaver drowning systems and whatnot. So I, I had an idea um, for a drag, a grapple, um, to use at top edge sets. And this is kind of what I explain to him and what I came up with and this is what he ended up designing from that idea um, this is designed to be pushed into the mud into the bank as you can see the uh, d-ring is welded on the top and that part of the drag comes to a point so it can be pushed into the bank better. Uh, you can also take a hammer and tap on the back of the drag to, to, to pound it into the mud. The points on this drag are straight. Um, this is designed for mink and muskrat, not, not coyotes. Um, it, it, you know, it's more or less the only, re you know, this drag is, a mink or muskrat really isn't gonna move this drag. Um, a raccoon, will pull it up onto the bank and get caught in brush. Um, you really don't need it digging, digging into the ground, leaving a, in the, you know, into the soil, leaving a trail like you would with a coyote drag. So that's why these are flat and that's so it, um, you know, goes into the bank a little bit easier. Um, but the real secret to making top edges with the, with these, uh, is that anti-hitch on there. I'll shut the camera off um, and I'll actually simulate this in the bank um, in my vise and I'll show you how the, the trap is attached to make top edge sets. Okay, <clears throat> let's imagine that the side of my vise here um, is a straight up and down vertical bank along a creek. You take this top edge grapple and you push it into the mud, into the clay, till it's about flush, till that part there's about flush with the bank, pound it in. Now, my favorite mink and muskrat trap is number two Victor. And these are my Bob Best toggles. They'll fit right in the, uh, right in the, the D-ring. Uh, I forgot to mention, obviously you gotta hook your trap up before you pound it into the bank. And then you can hold the chain back a little bit um, and pound it in. Okay, now once, you're, uh, once your chain's attached and the grapple's pushed into the mud, you simply set the trap right like that on the anti-hitch under about two inches of water. As you can see, that loose jaw is gonna go tight up to the mud, to the, to the vertical bank. Um, now this is not crazy stable. 
I mean, if a raccoon comes along and pushes on it, it can move it. Um, but anything swimming over top of it, it's not going to knock it off with its feet. It's going to hit the pan um, and go off. Like I said, I really uh, wanted this to work well for number two Victor Square Jaws. I bent this anti-hitch down a little bit too. It just makes the trap sit a little flatter. Um, but, you know, you can just kind of bend at it how you want for whatever trap you're planning on using. So that's the number two Victor. This is a extremely popular trap, probably one of the most popular water traps out there on the market. Uh, one and a half Duke coil spring. And that fits the same way. And the only thing is with some of these smaller traps, um, with the smaller jaws, but you're not gonna get as tight to the bank, you're gonna actually have to push that in, that your crossbar or the grapple is actually pushed into the bank a little bit to get the loose jaw right tied up to the bank. But a number, one and a half Duke fits, fits awesome on that drag. And you can even, you can even add a long spring if you want. Um, works for a bunch of different traps. Now, I bet you're wondering, uh, so that, that's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, you push the grapple uh, into, the, into the mud or clay bank and uh, set your trap there for a top edge set. So I bet you're wondering what this nut welded to the grapple is for. Well, it's for this. This is a piece of 3 8 inch rod with a bolt welded to it. And I get, you can probably guess where I'm going with this. All right, here's my top edge grapple with this three eighth inch rod uh, on a bolt threaded into that nut. It's about 30 inches long, uh, 30 inches, 30, 36 inches, about three foot. Uh, that's about the height of the top of my hip boots. So I really don't get in water uh, much deeper than that because I hate putting on chest waders every day. Um, so this is to make top edge sets at bridge walls. Um, Simply put this on the bottom, on your hard bottom or concrete bottom, or even if it's a mud bottom, um, set a pretty good sized rock on top of it. And it works for a variety of devices. You can use a hags bracket. Hags brackets are designed for a 3 8 inch steel rod. There's my number two Victor. And you put that tight up against the bridge wall, just like that. Um, and the number two Victor works awesome on the Hags bracket. And like I said, this will go pretty tight to the wall. It gets your loose jaw up against the wall. And, you know, when the water goes, say the water goes down, um, the Hags bracket's real easy to adjust to just reach underneath the whole apparatus, lift up, take the pressure off. So the camming action against a 3 8 inch rod, and you can, uh, you can raise or lower it real easy. Um, like I said, I, Hags bracket's really nice with uh, with number two Victors. Um, and, you know, you can actually, if you want, you can, you can use a J-hook and add that Hags bracket onto your trap somewhere along your chain. Um, you can keep your, keep your Bob Best toggle, you know, attached to the grapple through the D-ring but you can add that Hags bracket somewhere along the chain um, and then just slip it down over the top of your rod 
and you have a real easy system. And like I said, butt this, butt this whole thing up against the bridge wall, set a big rock on top of it, and a real easy system for when your uh, water levels go up and down like they do here in these eastern creeks. I mean, we, we're sometimes uh, moving traps every day from water levels going up or down. So that's the hags. And also a hangman will work. In the hangman, you gotta uh, put the put the trap puller on the outside because if you want the loose jaw to be against the bank, because with the, with the hangman. With the hangman, it fits um, over the dog. So yeah, uh, I have yet to use this on the act on a working trap line um, because I just kind of had the idea last year, and Gary Gary got uh, got me a prototype. But I'm kind of anxious. I, I really, I do a lot of bridge trapping, so I don't have a whole lot of places. Um, I, you know, I can, can use this at a mud bank, but I mean, I do have some. Um, but definitely, I, I think there's potential too in this rod attachment um, that you can, for, for really deep water. Um, you know, I, as you know, if you watch my other videos, I stack a lot of rocks and um, you know, obviously you can't stack rocks three foot high. Um, you'd be there forever. So I, I think this has a lot of potential um, for, you know, your, your deep water top edge sets too. Uh, and, and like I said, it's, this system really works neat, I, I think, with the, with the HAGS bracket. Um, you can just butt that tight up against the wall and add your HAGS and put your trap on it. Um, just want to give one shout out to Gary since he made that for me. Um, he's also started making these heavy duty sifters and he made one and uh, sent it to me to try out. I'm kind of excited to, to use it. I've never really used a diamond mesh sifter like this before, um, but really well made, really heavy duty. I just wanted to give him a shout out. He's, he's a really good guy and a friend of mine. So yeah. Um, I'd really like to hear some of your thoughts on this grapple system, top edge grapple. Um, you know, leave a comment down below if you can think of any way to improve on it or just have any suggestions or if you really kind of like the idea. Um, I, I, I just think it has a lot of potential. Uh, it, it's, uh, there's just a lot of ways you'll be able to use it on your mink and, and mink and rat and rat line. It's very versatile. So, all right. Well, till next time, trappers. Uh, coming up here, it's the end of May. Uh, coming up here in the is the PTA convention, so I'm sure I'll see a lot of you guys there. Um, excited to see some friends and make a couple new friends, and uh, I'll be set up. I'll be set up there again. Have a bunch of new t-shirts and some new hats and uh have even a couple new lures i'm bringing um so i, I really look forward to the show i'm kind of like a kid at christmas when it comes to trappers convention time i don't even hardly sleep the night before so i'm kind of pumped about that or as all these girls on instagram say i'm super excited about it so till next time see you later